Thank you very much, uh, uh, Fikalik Secretariat, uh, PhD Academy uh, participants. And uh, my presentation is on the quantitative research MLT dimensional scaling focus. Uh, I am Dr. Mujit Anagash from University of Gondar. And uh, my presentation uh, would be started by a very important uh, saying from uh, German Gotti. He said that no man learns to know his inmost uh, nature by introspection, for he rates himself sometimes too low and often too high by his own measurement. Man knows himself only by comparing himself with other men. It is life that touches his genuine world. Uh, that is, we need to compare ourselves uh, to the global community. My presentation uh, do have uh, these uh, components. Uh, the first one, overview and uh, justification of uh, my presentation, quantitative versus uh, qualitative research, justification uh, for quantitative in general and multidimensional scaling in particular. Actually, it is uh, why I like to present it and uh, prejudice of the difficulty, basic concepts in multidimensional scaling, statistical terms associated with multidimensional scaling, conducting multidimensional scaling uh, would be uh, the point is, and uh, first let me uh, justify why I like to present this topic for uh, such a high caliber people uh, like you. Uh, the reason is that a few people in the postgraduate program, spe specifically in my country, are using uh, this multidimensional scaling, and it is more feasible uh, for innovative research for economic development researches, and in the case of new product development, a new uh, process introduction that would succeed in the market or would fail uh, would be predicted by this multidimensional scaling uh, technique. Uh, so we have a lot of research on multidimensional scaling. It is rare in Africa specifically. A lot of academic literature have been introduced in the Western, but this multidimensional scaling has been uh, then very little as to the analogy of the uh, presenter. First, let me uh, define what research is. Research is a systematic and objective identification, collection, analysis, dissemination, and use of information for the purpose of improving decision making related to the identification, related to solution of problems, and uh, identification of opportunity in the innovation, in the business, in the marketing, in the economic development research uh, endeavor. And uh, we need to also be very clear what is uh, the difference between quantitative research uh, characteristics and qualitative research uh, characteristics. Uh, the first one is on the quantitative research characteristics. This research is done to describe a research problem through trends and relationship and it give a major role for the literature to suggest question and justify research uh, problems. And this creates a purpose statement, research questions and hypotheses that are specific, narrow, measurable, and observable, and also that can be uh, inferred to the general uh, population. And uh, in the quantitative research, additionally, uh, this collect numeric data uh, from a large number of people using instrument, uh, survey instruments, or, uh, uh, or it might be, the instrument might be on the experiments and it might analyze data for trends. It might analyze uh, data for comparing groups. It might be on base of uh, income, on base of uh, sex, on the base of uh, uh, race, whatever. And it wants to see the relationship among variables. And uh, in the quantitative research also, uh, this write research report using a very standardized uh, fixed structure and an objective and based approach. And the second one is uh, this quantitative research, uh, we need to be uh, clear uh, with the qualitative research. The qualitative research do have these characteristics. Uh, this explore, qualitative research, uh, explore a problem through obtaining a detailed understanding of a central phenomena from a qualitative uh, data and have a literature justify the problem and play a minor role. It uh, focus on what we found rather than from uh, what is already done. 
And uh, this qualitative research status, the purpose and the research question in general and in an open-ended way uh, as opposed to standard uh, format. And uh, let me introduce you, actually, you have done a lot of uh, researches and discussion on innovation and economic development, but let me define what innovation is. Innovation is conceived as a means of uh, changing an organization either as a response to change in the external environment or as a preemptive action to influence the environment. Hence, innovation is here broadly defined to encompass a range of types, including new product introduction, new service introduction, new process or technology introduction, new organization uh, structure implementation, administrative system introduction, or new plans or program uh, that have been pertained to organization members uh, can be considered as innovation uh, because innovation can be uh, seen from a various uh, perspective in the business and economic research. Uh, the second one is on economic development. Economic development is the development of capacity that expand economic actors' capability. Uh, the economic capabilities actor may include individuals. It might include firms, industries, public agencies, professional associations, universities, or NGOs, uh, and this is simply uh, doesn't count a number of jobs credits or rate of growth of uh, GDP, output, economic development, but it is also concerned with a quality of uh, such uh, growth. Uh, for uh, your information, uh, this is the first segmentation that is uh, based on multidimensional scaling that has been introduced in the United States. This model is called VALS. VALS is uh, uh, for value and lifestyle uh, of United States customer. And they have uh, classified this, their customer into eight categories, innovator, ideals, achievers, self-express, thinkers, whatever, whatever. And these types of uh, segmentation is done by multidimensional scaling. And most of you have uh, learned these uh, concepts these uh, pointers, but how these have been developed is uh, for uh, most of you, including myself, uh, it is uh, very, very novel. Uh, that is why I like to introduce this technique to you. The second one is uh, car buyers in the United States have been also classified or segmented uh, based on uh, various criteria into uh, seven category. These types of uh, category categorization it can be done by using multidimensional scaling. We know these models, but we don't know how this model have been developed. That is why I uh, have been, I was uh, very impressed to introduce this uh, technique to you. Uh, actually, my first justification for uh, presenting a lecture on the multidimensional scaling is that uh, this, the list of brands I have uh, presented here is beer brands in Ethiopia. And uh, no segmentation, no perceptual maps have been done till now to the knowledge of myself because I have a lot of association to uh, research that has been done in Gondar University, in Bahadar University, in Addis Ababa University, in uh, Hawassa University, in a number of universities. and. Uh, even in uh, private universities, but I never uh, found uh, such types of uh, segmentation or perceptual maps and which brand of uh, this uh, would be competing with which one and which uh, looks like uh, similar and which of these brands are quite different and which of these are similar has not been done. And actually uh, these types of segmentation, these types of perceptual mapping can be done on a number of technological products, uh, on a number of uh, new uh, services, on a number of new processes that might be introduced in Africa in general. For example, multidimensional scaling has been done for a number of uh, products, uh, Pepsi against Sprite, Sprite against Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola against Fanta, a number of research have been done, and uh, the company and the academic community knows uh, which is the close competitor of uh, their products. And they know also uh, where they stand in the minds of the customer. At the top, 
at the lower or at the medical place so that they can reposition based on their research finding from multidimensional scaling. They can adjust uh, the taste of the product, the price of the product, the promotion of the product, or in any uh, manner, the content of the product could be uh, in, uh, could be improved based on uh, their findings. So a very simple definition of multidimensional scaling. It is a class of uh, procedure for representing perception and preference of respondent, especially by means of uh, visual uh, display. Uh, when we say multidimensional scaling, this the product is represented in the minds of the customers, in the perception. And the perception, the perceptual uh, understanding of customer can be depicted in two or three dimensional uh, picture. And this perceived or psychological relationship among the stimuli or products, services, or innovation are represented as a geometric relationship among points in a a multidimensional aspects. This geometric representation are often called spatial maps, and the axis of the spatial maps are assumed to denote the psychological basis or underlying dimension of uh, re respondents used to form a perception and preference for a stimuli. For a stimuli. So uh, first, we uh, let me introduce you a very important statistical uh, terms concepts in relation to multidimensional scaling. The first one is similarity judgment. Similarity judgment are uh, rating on all possible pairs of brands or other similar in terms of their similarity using a Likert scale. That is, the customer will be uh, provided 10 or 15 uh, brands and they will be uh, comparing each one, forced pair. X brand against Y brands. And uh, if uh, customers are assuming that X and Y is very close, they will rate it as. If they consider it is very, very different, they will be giving it 10. So when we do the analysis, we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be looking the similarities among alternative brands, the 10 brands which are very similar and which are very uh, different would be depicted uh, in. Uh, picture. Uh, the second one is preference ranking. In the preference ranking, preference ranking are rank ordering of brands or other stimuli from the most preferred to the least preferred. They are normally obtained from the respondents. In the preference ranking, what we are doing is that if we do have 10 uh, brands, uh, customers will be forced to uh, give one point for the most preferred brands and 10 points for the least brands. And the mean of uh, the preference would show the most uh, preferred brand will have a minimum mean and the least preferred brand will have uh, the maximum mean. And that would be showing in the uh, preference ranking. And we do have actually a space procedure for conducting preference ranking. And uh, the third one is stress. This is uh, the measure of uh, fitness. And in the stress measurement, we'll be looking that when the stress value is near to zero, the measurement, the model is very, very fit. And if it is close to one, the uh, fitness of the measurement or the model is in question mark. The other one is R square. Uh, R square, we know that R square is a very important measurement in uh, multiple linear regression, for example, R square represents that how much of uh, the uh, variables account for the explaining the dependent uh, variable. Like that, in the multidimensional scaling, R square is a squared correlation index that indicates the proportion of variance of the optimality scale data that can be accounted for by the multidimensional scaling procedure. This is a, a goodness of a fit measure. When R square is 60, we can say that the 60% of uh, the variance can be accounted by this procedure and 40% would be accounted by other uh, variables. And the other one is a spatial map. Uh, this spatial map uh, perceived relationship among brands or other stimuli are represented as geometric relationship among points in a multidimensional space called spatial maps. Uh, that could be shown on a space on the map. And the coordinates, uh, most of the time, this multidimensional scaling 
uh, it should be represented to the maximum of uh, three dimensions or two dimensions. Most of the time, uh, multidimensional scaling is used by uh, two uh, coordinates, X coordinate and Y coordinate, and sometimes Z coordinate can be used. But when the number of uh, coordinates are increasing, uh, the, it is very difficult to uh, interpret and explain. And the other one is unfolding. This is a representation of uh, both brands and the respondents as point in the same space is referred to as unfolding. This is the procedure where uh, brands and segments uh, can be matched by using SPSS procedure. For example, uh, the customers might be uh, segmented into five uh, segmentation and the brand might be uh, five. So in the unfolding, which segment is preferring which brands? Brand one to segment one, brand uh, five to segment two might be uh, used in a representation. This is for representing both brands and respondent means uh, segments or customers as point in the same space is referred to the unfolding. That is, you need to have unfolding. In the unfolding, you can make sure that which customer, which uh, respondent group is uh, for a particular brand X and against a particular uh, brand Y. That's called unfolding. So uh, this multidimensional scaling is a set of statistical techniques which allow one to translate. Actually, uh, you have to be very, very clear here. This is not one technique. Multidimensional scaling encompass factor analysis or uh, principal component analysis, uh, correspondence analysis, uh, cluster analysis. A number of techniques are combined and they are coming into multidimensional scaling. For example, for segmenting customers, into three, into five, we will be using cluster analysis. And for identifying if we do have uh, 20 characteristics of a product, attribute of a product, we might uh, summarize into five by using factor analysis. So this multidimensional scaling, it is not one technique, but it is a, a bunch of, or it is a group of uh, statistical techniques which allow one to translate consumer preference or perception Toward this product or brand into reduced number of dimensions, usually two or three. If the dimensions are two, it is very, very, very uh, crystal clear. Even if it is three, also it might be not much uh, difficult, but when it is more than three, it is very difficult to uh, visualize and to show the difference. And this represents them graphically into preference maps or uh, perceptual maps. Preference maps, that is ordering number one choice of my product is x my number two is uh, b and my last one is that that's called uh, preference uh, maps would be done in the perceptual maps a likert scale measurement would be made and it might be showing that where uh, customers are uh, considering as a favorable or unfavorable and which uh, brand is competing with other can be uh, shown by perceptual maps by using Likert scale in the preference ordinal. That is number one choice, number two choice, last choice would be done. In the multidimensional scaling, it is also possible to show both objects and subjects. Objects, that is the product, the process, the technology, a new product, new uh, technology, and the object, the consumer, in the same graph through multidimensional. Unfolding, we have said unfolding is matching the uh, new technology and what technology would be preferred by what type of customers uh, would be shown by using unfolding. And this multidimensional scaling is a technique which unfolds uh, the coordinate for consumers or group of consumers on the basis of their preference or uh, perception through uh, the ideal uh, model ideal model. For example, uh, would you see this uh, graph? Hello? Uh, yes. Is it uh, uh, we, we can see uh, a lot of names of uh, capitals around Excellent. in the common From space. Europe. Yeah. Can you see this one? Sorry? Can you see this one? London, this yes. Yes, it's this visible. Is yes, yes, this Paris. Yes, this is Rome. Yeah, this is Madrid. This is Brussels. 
This is token. Mm. We do two dimension. The y axis is interpreted as how trendy the city is, and this x axis is represented as climate. Actually, customers have been presented uh, which city uh, is similar uh, to which city. They compare, for example, London to Paris, uh, Paris to Berlin, London to Berlin, Amsterdam to Rome, Rome to London, Paris to London. Uh, this all city would be uh, compared by respondents. Uh, 300 something respondents have been answered for this question. So based on uh, the response of the customers, it is found that this is the perceptual map of uh, this particular finding. And it showed that Paris is at the top. Can you see? Paris is at the top and Brussels and Stockholm is at, at uh, near to the uh, ordinate or to the bottom. This perceptual map showed that London and Paris are almost similar or competitive and Paris and Brussels are quite different and London and Athens are quite different, but Athens and Madrid are uh, competitive or similar, and Madrid and Rome are similar, and Stockholm and Brussels are similar. This is the finding. Actually, this the nomination. Climate is nominated by the researcher. Interpretation, how trendy the city is also uh, named by the researcher. Uh, so these types of uh, research can be done in Africa also how Addis Ababa is uh, competing to Johannesburg and how, uh, how uh, Egypt or Cairo is competing against how customers or visitors look this, the various uh, cities of Africa is looked based on heritage, based on, uh, the, uh, based on their uh, natural resources, they can be competing and uh, they can frame how to compete, for example, uh, Addis Ababa might be more uh, close competitor to Cairo than to Nairobi. And Nairobi might be more closer to uh, Tanzania uh, or Dar es Salaam. Uh, this type of research can be done by using how holiday destination in Africa uh, is competing. So our uh, PhD students can do holiday destination perceptual maps because it has not been done uh, to my knowledge. Each of respondents is asked to do this, uh, which uh, necessarily specify why one city was preferred to another. And similarity in ranking across an adequate number of respondents reflect uh, perceptual similarity between London is more similar to Berlin and uh, graph distance uh, and Paris is quite different from uh, Brussels. If the two dimension can be labeled according to some criteria uh, for principal component or factor analysis, then it becomes possible to understand the main perceived difference. So, and when we do uh, principal component analysis or when we do uh, factor analysis, the naming is done by the researcher based on the contents of the question, the contents items you can label as climate or trendy city. And these types of uh, finding can be uh, done at, uh, a multidimensional quantitative approach. And innovation approach of multidimensional uh, scaling, for example, sensory evaluation of new product. When new product is developed, uh, multidimensional uh, scaling can be done. For example, a low salt uh, a soap might be uh, developed and a low salt uh, might be developed. And what is the perception of the customers might be assessed. An evaluation of panel panel expert is asked to assess a set of existing soap brands according to several credit, uh, criteria. It might be the taste of the soap, the smell of the store, uh, the soap, the thickness of the soap, the storage duration for how long the soap uh, stays in the shelf, uh, perceived healthiness and price of the soap uh, can be done. Uh, consumers are asked to identify their ideal product in terms of the same characteristics uh, which may not coincide with one of the existing soaps, new uh, would be also introduced. And the final output is a perceptual map uh, displaying both consumer preference in terms of their ideal products and the current positioning of the existing uh, brands. Uh, for your information, when 
uh, when organization do have uh, their own uh, product uh, uh, product uh, product uh, portfolio in the market what is the positioning of uh, their brands in the mind of customer can be done by multidimensional scaling and based on the finding of uh, the customer's positioning uh, the repositioning strategy can be uh, developed if uh, customers uh, perceive a particular brand in the wrong position against the expectation of the organization or the company it can reposition it can gain uh, correct it can correct its positioning by doing uh, this multidimensional scaling and a company uh, might also uh, develop a concentration of consumer ideal points uh, to identify a segment. Uh, organization might have 100,000 customers. These 100,000 customers might require different types of uh, brands. It is not possible to uh, have 100,000 items, so we need to do cluster analysis. Uh, this 100,000 uh, cluster can be classified into 10 uh, segments. So for 10 segments, 10 different types of brands can be introduced by uh, what we said, unfolding uh, procedure. If no brand appear in the neighborhood of a segment, then there is a room for uh, development of new product in that area. When we do uh, the multidimensional scaling and in the perceptual maps, if we didn't find a product uh, that is uh, nearer to the customer segments, then we have uh, to introduce new uh, brands that might be in the interests of uh, the customer, that might be satisfying the customer requirements. If the perceptual dimension have been clearly uh, identified, uh, this also allow one to choose the characteristics of the new product that should be uh, helpful in uh, beating competition because uh, you can uh, choose uh, attribute of the product that might uh, uh, better satisfy customer needs and wants. For example, here you might see that we have a different. Uh, can you see this one? Are you there? Yes. Yes, we can see it. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is consumer segment C. Yeah. Uh, this one is one brand, and mm -hmm. this one is consumer segment A. This is brand C. This is brand five. This is brand segment B. This is brand one. And this one is brand two. A. Mm -hmm. This one is consumer segment D. And this one is brand four. So this uh, procedure is called unfolding. Unfolding means that matching the brand, which is uh, preferred most by a particular segment. For example, here, consumer D is nearer to which brand? Two brand, two. Is that not? Consumer segment D is nearer to uh, brand uh, brand two or brand three. Can you tell me? Consumer segment D. Brand two. Huh? Letting out, Mr. Consumer brand segment two. D, is it nearer to brand four or brand three? Brand four. It's four. It's four. Brand four. Yeah. Excellent. This procedure is called unfolding. That is, consumer segment will be requiring brand four, and consumer segment A is preferring brand three, and uh, consumer segment uh, brand B is preferring brand five, and consumer segment uh, C is preferring these uh, brands. This procedure is called unfolding. Uh, we might read this one. The two dimensions are the output of uh, some reduction technique. It might be principal component analysis or factor analysis for interval or metric data and correspondence analysis for non-metric data. Correspondence analysis, uh, principal component analysis, factor analysis, and cluster analysis give us uh, this uh, the uh, multidimensional scaling. The coordinate for brands are obtained by running uh, principal component analysis or factor analysis on the sensory assessment usually through a panel of expert analysis objective measurement exists and consumer positions as individual or as a segment can be derived into way you might use their ideal brand characteristics or by translating 
preference ranking, uh, ranking of brands into coordinates through unfolding uh, procedure. So here is brand positioning. In marketing, brand positioning means that where customers keep in the first virtual maps of the customer, where a specific place uh, the brand uh, occupies called brand positioning. Consumer segment C, consumer segment A, brand three, brand five, consumer segment B, uh, brand one, brand two. I might give you, for example, one experience I read from uh, case analysis. Uh, you are aware of uh, Red Bull. You know Red Bull? Energy drink? Yes, we do. Yes, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, once, uh, once upon a time also, Coca-Cola has introduced uh, Coca Energy. Energy Cola was introduced and it was a very excellent product, but it was a total fail. Why it failed was that customers didn't assume that Coca is an energy drink. Coca is a soda drink. So it failed. That's called brand positioning. Brand positioning means customers, where did where customers keep in their mind? Where is your position based on their uh, perceptions of uh, that characteristic so uh, brand positioning? And brand positioning can be uh, done by using multi-dimensional uh, scaling. So uh, here, consumer segment D is happy with brand uh, two, and consumer segment B is happy to. Uh, brand uh, three and uh, brand one and brand four are perceived very, very similar. And it is not also uh, mirror. And segment A choose three, but it is not uh, that close. It is very, very uh, far. You can see that segment A, segment A is this one, but the brands are very, very far. Here is brand three and here is uh, brand. Uh, uh, brand two, but they are very, very far. So here there is a chance for introducing new brands for segment A, for me, segment A. Uh, brand five survived because of segment C, but it is far from C uh, preference. So the product should be healthy as uh, both A and C, where this healthy comes is this one, healthiness, size, and uh, uh, this the dimension have been uh, labeled by the uh, by the researcher and there is a room for product segment c also uh, choose to segment a and brand repositioning can be done also by using multi-dimensional scaling because if brand five had this marketing research information one could uh, improve uh, one's performance by enhancing uh, perceived healthiness of the product example reducing the salt content through uh, targeting the advertising campaign, this uh, would move brand uh, flavor close to segment A. So uh, brand repositioning, because when customer assume that your brand is uh, represented uh, wrongly, you can reposition it by making uh, the content of uh, product adjustment or by making your marketing communication, you can reposition in the minds of uh, the customers. And we do have also other applications of uh, multi-dimensional scaling. If consumer perception are compared through multi-dimensional scaling before and after advertising campaign aimed at changing perception, it becomes possible to measure the success of the advertising effort. Uh, once uh, before uh, 80, 90 years ago, uh, there was one person, uh, he was uh, marketing association, uh, American Marketing Association, uh, chairperson and he said he said that 50% uh, of my advertisement expense is waste, uh, but I continue advertising because I don't know which 50% is wasting. So uh, you might be see that uh, you can make you can make a measure your advertisement campaign was a success or a failure by doing multi-dimensional scaling. You will do this. Uh, before and after uh, conducting of uh, particular advertisement. Before advertisement, you do uh, perceptual assessment, preference and perceptual assessment. And after conducting 
advertisement, you do uh, the perceptual assessments and you'll compare. So if there is a gap between uh, before advertisement and after advertisement, then you will be making claim that advertisement was a success. And if there is no change, then the advertisement uh, that you spend lots of uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollar uh, budget uh, might be a waste. Finally, multidimensional uh, could be exploited to simplify data interpretation and provide some prior insight before running psycho-attitudinal survey specifically for uh, validity uh, purpose, you can do multidimensional scaling. Multidimensional scaling is, it is, as I told you, it is a container of statistical technique to produce perceptual or difference maps. There is a range of options and choice depending on the type of multidimensional scaling data. Uh, and the object of analysis, it can be product, it can be brand, it can be uh, process, it can be a new technology, it can be uh, a new uh, system, or it can be a new organizational structure uh, or target of consumers like tourism destination in the initial example. The object can be described as a set of characteristics represented through. We do have two types of uh, measurements. We have objective dimension and subjective uh, dimension and uh, measurement. Objective dimension means it has uh, absolute zero uh, pointers. If you add salt, one gram, uh, it's called objective dimension because there is a difference between adding salt and uh, uh, not adding salt. 10 gram salt and zero gram salt has objective dimension. Subjective dimension, it is uh, declared by respondent subject in survey as specifically an innovation in technology, in business and economics we are using uh, subjective dimension, like for example, Likert scale measurements uh, from strongly agree to strongly disagree. What is the difference between uh, the strongly agree and is, uh, agree and strongly disagree and disagree? It is uh, a subjective dimension that might uh, differ from respondent one to respondent two. So it's called uh, subjective dimension and it depends on the respondents. And we have uh, preference and perception. With uh, subjective dimension, consumer evaluation can be uh, based on preference or uh, perception. And uh, specifically, uh, this is very, very interesting because in the subjective dimension, uh, customer's uh, evaluation can be on preference or perception. In the very initial point, we have said that uh, preference is listing out of uh, brands. If you do have 10 brands, you might be listing one as most preferred and 10 as least pre preferred. That's called preference. Perception, that is how similar they are, how uh, different they are. Brand A against brand B, brand C against brand D, and also how happy customers are, that is perception. Strongly happy, strongly dishappy. Uh, measurement through preference is uh, the subject ranks several objects according to their overall evaluation example, ordering of uh, soap brands, measurements through perception. This is perceptual or uh, subjective dimension. As I told you, the result of uh, perception is perceptual maps, and the results of uh, uh, the result of measurement uh, preference is preference maps. And the respondent must attach subjective value uh, to an objective uh, feature, example, rating of the thickness of each uh, soap uh, brands. When individuals attribute uh, perception are measured, a respondent may be asked to state the combination of an object's feature that correspond to uh, their ideal objects to be translated into an ideal point. The ideal point can be alternatively and preferably be derived through unfolding statistical method. We have uh, discussed this one. This is matching the segment of customer to the specific brand of their choices. We have actually uh, the uh, their uh, procedure in SAS and uh, spaces. Preference, it can be rank order or Q sorting, 25, uh, 50s, uh, 75s, other comparative scale can be done in the preference. In perception, we might do non-comparative scale like Likert scale, a staple from uh, 
five to uh, negative five or semantic differential from a bipolar uh, statement trendy not trendy fashionable not fashionable can be used in the semantic differential scale we have uh, two types of variables of uh, multidimensional scaling the metric variables and metric variables the non metric variable justify reflect ranking so that it is not possible to assess whether the distance between the first and the subject object is larger or smaller than the distance between the second and the third. And metric uh, variable reflect the respondent perception of the distance. So in the non-metric uh, variable measurement, our multidimensional scaling measurement is what? Can you tell me, please? If we make it more interactive. Maybe you can repeat the question, please. The question is that we do have two types of measurement in multidimensional scaling. One is non-metric variable and the other one is metric variable. So what is the uh, multidimensional scaling output of non-metric variable and what is the multidimensional scaling output of metric variable? Okay, anybody who has uh, want to take a go on this? You're free to raise your hands or just jump in. I think everybody is dead scared of making a mistake here. <laughs> Mulugeta, <laughs> help us I'm out. Happy. You're happy. I'm happy. Yeah, okay. okay. Then metric variables, uh, multidimensional scaling is uh, 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 preference maps. The result of non-metric variable is uh, preference uh, maps, and the measurements of metric variable is perceptual maps. We do have two types of maps. This the non-metric non-metric means that it is ordinal. The customer is ordering which yeah. they are preferring. Yeah, I think that's which, clear. Yes, which tourism destination place they are preferring and mm -hmm. which they list. So the result is in the in the multidimensional scaling is called uh, the uh, pre uh, preference maps. And in the metric variable, the measurement is how they are happy or how they prefer X or versus Y, mm -hmm. or how they are happy on the climates of Addis Ababa against uh, Cairo. That's mm -hmm. called uh, perception. And so, the, mm -hmm. uh, Maps, multidimensional scaling map is called perception maps. We have two types of multidimensional scaling maps. One is preference mapping, and the other one is perception maps. Perception maps is for metric variable, yeah. and preference uh, mapping is for non metric variable. Generally, preference ranking are classified as non metric, uh, non metric, and perceptions and objective dimensions are metric. This distinction can be very important as it leads to uh, two different multidimensional approaches. The output of non-metric multidimensional aim to pres uh, preserve the preference ranking supplied by the respondents. And metric multidimensional scaling also takes into account the distance as measured by perception or objective quantities. Actually, we have uh, quite difference uh, from the statistician in the social science, in the innovation, in the economics, in business, in marketing, uh, our metric measurements are perception. Like for example, like Earth scale, how much happy are you on X product, on X technology, on X process? I'm very happy, uh, not happy, neutral, happy, very happy. This is, we measure it as metric. But for a statistician, uh, it might not be metric. Actually, uh, we are using this metric measurement for multidimensional scaling and the business and in the social science. This distinction is often overcome by the use of techniques which allow one to transform non-metric variable and treat them as if they were metric, like uh, print uh, qual poster in SAS or correspondence analysis uh, in the uh, next point. Is, the other one is uh, multidimensional scaling. We do have uh, four procedures in the multidimensional uh, scaling. 
seven procedure, sorry. The first one is decide whether the mapping is based on aggregate evaluation of the object or an evaluation of set of attributes. Uh, that means we do have two approaches, decompositional versus compositional. Decompositional means that uh, you might be assessing a particular brand based on aggregate evaluation as a whole, as a sum, how much you are happy. Your happiness uh, would be uh, aggregated as a total. If we see it uh, very uh, separately in terms of price, in terms of taste, in terms of texture, in terms of shelf life, it is called compositional. But if we make it as, as aggregate satisfaction, it is called decompositional. And in the multi-dimensional scaling, the second step is define the characteristics of the data collection steps. It might be number of objects, metric versus non-metric variables, as we have uh, discussed previously, the perceptual or preference mapping resultants, and translate the survey or objective measurements into a similarity or preference data matrix, estimate the perceptual maps, decide on the number of dimensions to be considered and level, Dimension and the ideal point. Level means naming, naming based on the characteristics of uh, the question you have asked. You have to give name for the dimension. For the X, you have to give name. For the Y, you have to give a uh, name. And or, uh, you have to validate the analysis, whether the stress level, the goodness of it, uh, the result you get from the analysis is acceptable or uh, very poor can be uh, decided. And uh, in detail, what is decompositional versus compositional we have said is here. Uh, decompositional is attribute free. It is aggregated. The spatial maps reflect the subjective evaluation, comparison of object in their integrity, in their totality. The advantages of decompositional approach is that uh, respondent's assessment is easier. It is possible to obtain a separate, a separate perceptual map for each subject or for a homogeneous uh, groups of objects. And actually it has a limitation, no specific information on the determinant of relative position of the object. Because here in the compositional, probably the brand might have 20 attributes. The 20 attributes are evaluated as one, whether they are happy or not happy, uh, as an aggregate uh, value. The second approach is called compositional. Compositional or attribute based, it is in the uh, separate uh, situation. The subject has a set of attributes. The TNT attribute of a brand would be assessed uh, separately and prefer when it is relevant to describe the dimension and explain the positioning of the object and subject in the perceptual maps. And actually it do have, sorry, <coughs> it have uh, some requirements. All relevant attributes must be considered while avoiding including irrelevant ones. And the combination of attribute must be adequate to reflect the overall object uh, evaluation. So in the compositional subject assessment, a set of attribute, it is not based on one attribute and preferred when it is relevant to describe the dimension and explain the positioning of object and subject in the perceptual map based on each attribute. And the requirement is the relevant attribute must be considered. The method uh, to be used uh, depend on the chosen approach. Object and variables uh, in the multidimensional scaling, uh, the higher the number of objects, the more accurate the output of multidimensional scaling. Um Sorry, uh, so uh, I think uh, Get had you Chesama has his hands up. Do you have a question, maybe? And then I also need to ask you how many more slides you have. Sorry. Okay, I have uh, around uh, twenty-four. Twenty-four more slides. Mm. Shall I uh, skip? Yeah, I think so because otherwise there will be no time uh, for for discussion, and I think people oh, would like a little bit discuss. of time. But um, maybe we take this one question from uh, Getzadir, and uh, and then I can give you uh, if everybody is okay with it, I will give you like 10, 15 minutes more, and then we have a brief discussion towards the end. Is that okay with everybody? Please post uh, by uh, 
putting uh, thumbs up. We are happy. Okay. Uh, Geta, do you, do you have a question? Geta, do you Tessima? No? Okay. So uh, please take your hand down then and um, and uh, Mulugeta, please. Um, uh, we have him. Yeah. Okay. So uh, please go ahead, Mulugeta. Okay. Actually, it is a new technique, to, uh, so a lot of uh, people might not. Uh... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's it's very interesting. Yes. Super. Okay, uh, and the uh, multidimensional scaling, uh, we do have uh, objects and variable for actually in the multidimensional scaling, it is advisable to have uh, 15 objects. And uh, actually, you can go to uh, the 10 variables, and the number of objects increase goodness of fit measure. In the goodness of uh, fit measure, we have a stress measure. And when it is nearer to zero, it is perfect. Measurements through metric or non metric, we have said the starting matrix for multidimensional uh, dimension scaling is different. With non metric data, ordinal value or paired comparison data, the initial data matrix only consider ranking. With metric variable, the matrix preserve the distance. Actually, we have uh, discussed data for multidimensional scaling are similarities between objects or preference. And compositional approach, a matrix for each. Uh, subject exists which translate into a matrix comparison or object. Uh, compositional approach is chosen a matrix for each subject and attribute exists and this translate into a matrix comparing all objects for each attribute. And uh, we have said compositional, the compositional approach. And uh, the other is estimation. Estimation start from proximity or similarity, matrix and procedure associate of n dimension. And the I, I, Mulugeta, I think it's better you slow down again because otherwise it will be too fast for people. As you said, this is new techniques and so on. Okay. So people are quite happy with you to take time and that's fine. We'll just don't have as much time for discussion afterwards, okay? okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, what uh, we were discussing on uh, decompositional and compositional is already we have said. And the decompositional will be uh, doing the assessment as, a, as a, an integrity. In the compositional, we evaluate uh, attribute based on a specific characteristics, price, uh, shelf life, uh, taste, whatever, whatever. And the other one is estimation. Estimation, this estimation starts from a proximity or similarity matrix and produce a set of n uh, dimensional coordinates and distance in this n dimensional space reflect as closely as possible. Uh, the distance are recorded by proximity uh, matrix. Metric scaling is based on proximity matrix derived from metric uh, data. And we have said that metric and non-metric. Metric is about uh, we, what we are saying as in the interval data. Strongly agree to, strongly disagree. And non-metric, that is uh, comparing two brands. I prefer X to Y or X is quite similar to Y. That's called non-metric. Estimation, non-metric scaling project dissimilarities based on ranking, ordinal variables. Uh, this preserving the order emerging from the subjective preference. That is, you are ordering from the most preferred to the least preferred. And the result is showing when the ordinate distance between X brand and Y brand is very long, we said that they are very dissimilar. And when X and Y brands are in nearby, we consider they are very similar. And then metric scaling uh, should also be applied to metric distance when the researcher suspect that uh, collected data might be affected by relevant measurement errors. Example, when respondents may encounter difficulties in stating their perception with a uh, precision while ordering can be regarded as more reliable. With metric variable, one might apply factor analysis, uh, principal component analysis. Uh, can anybody tell me what factor analysis and principal component analysis? Anybody who can explain that or should we ask for uh, Murugeta to explain? I think we'll ask you to explain. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, 
uh, when we do this uh, multidimensional scaling, uh, we said that it is a mix of different types of statistical technique. Factor analysis and uh, principal component analysis, uh, principal component analysis, they are used to, as a, um, to reduce dimension. They are called data reduction technique, data reduction technique. That is, for example, I might be asking a particular issue by using uh, 20 question item, questionnaire items. So it is very difficult. Which questionnaire item is matching to which questionnaire item? And by conducting PCA or FA, I can reduce this into four variables, five variables. That's called factor analysis or principal component analysis. This technique has to be used for multidimensional scaling, specifically when we are planning to do unfolding uh, procedure. And the coordinate obtained from PCA and FA are the best representation of original data. And metric scaling coordinate ensure that the distance between two points is close as possible to distance measured. And uh, the other is, is issue is that classical multidimensional scaling technique. Actually, uh, I am presenting this not as a statistician, I am presenting as a user of statistics, as a, a user or consumer of statistics. In classical multidimensional scaling technique, this is also known as principal coordinate analysis. Uh, it is a decompositional approach, unique similarity matrix comparing all objectives, and the proximity or similarity matrix is obtained by applying Euclidean distance on the data matrix, Euclidean distance on the X and axis, Euclidean and non Euclidean uh, that uh, we should leave for economists and for uh, mathematicians. We have uh, two dimension, and when it is more than two, it is called non Euclidean. And we have uh, Ordinal variables, preference data, coordinate are obtained through computational algorithm. Many procedures, the original method was called shepard crustal It is as follows, given number of dimension n, n should be two to the maximum of three. Otherwise, it is very difficult to uh, visualize uh, the difference. And the p objects are represented through an arbitrary initial set of coordinates. And a function s is defined to measure how this time the current set of coordinate is from original ordering monotonicity requirements. And using relative computer numerical algorithm, the value that minimizes S are found and the procedure are, can be ex extended to include a search for optimal number of dimension. As we said, the optimal number of uh, dimension N should be two or three and as an algorithm, hal scale spaces uh, can be implemented. And this is the stress measurement. Actually, this is the mathematical, and it is very easy to calculate by using SPSS. Stress is a measure of uh, goodness of fit. If the stress value is nearer to zero, uh, the modin is good. And if it is near to one, uh, the modin is uh, in question mark. Stress is a value decrease as a number of dimension increase. When the comparing variable is increasing, the stress value is decreasing. Actually, in multivariate, uh, this is common, and the number of dimension can be evaluated through uh, a screen diagram of stress against the number of dimension as for uh, factor analysis, principal component analysis, or cluster, cluster analysis is used for segmenting uh, groups where the optimal number corresponds to an elbow. elbow. The preferred number of dimension is usually two or three, which are low for graphical examination. The search usually goes from one to five dimension. Identification of the optimal number of, uh, within the metric and then metric iterative algorithm. An additional step evaluate the stress function. The algorithm stop where additional addition of other dimension does not reduce stress value to a perceptual extent with two dimension stress value below 0 0.05 is generally considered to be satisfactory. And the other one is labeling dimension. In factor analysis, in pr uh, principal component analysis, labeling is very important. Labeling means giving name to your dimension. To the Y and to the X, you have to give name based on uh, the characteristics of uh, the questionnaire, uh, what uh, you want, uh, what customers, or what respondents reply. Interpretable dimension attaching a meaning to coordinate enhance the use of multidimensional scaling maps, example, new product development. Interpretation may be difficult. Uh, compositional approach or attribute rating are otherwise available. 
allow for more objective method based on the relative weight of each attribute, something similar to uh, factor loading in the uh, factor analysis and principal component analysis, objective positioning ideal point for each object and the actual brand evaluation uh, within the same map. Ideal point is set of coordinate where represent the stand stated optimal combination of attribute. If uh, no precise statement is made by the subject, it is still possible to locate the ideal point. Indirect positioning of ideal point is based on the procedure which ensure distance of the object. Actually, this the indirect positioning we have seen in the previous time. When customer segment C is away from brand A, brand B, uh, there is uh, a possibility to position a brand C. Uh, nearer to brand uh, to the specific customer group that is called indirect uh, positioning. We have actually two types of mapping, internal preference mapping and external preference mapping. Internal preference mapping is the proximity, uh, proximity matrix for object is based on evaluation from the customer. Customers uh, would be rating a particular product. External preference mapping means the proximity matrix contain objective measurement of product characteristics uh, that is based on from uh, product developers, from experts, from panels. And the two approach can be used in uh, mapping uh, multidimensional uh, scaling. What are the internal mapping? The ideal point or vector for each subject is estimated from the preference ordering through unfolding. Unfolding, we said that it is matching a particular brand to a particular customer group, four brands, A, B, C, D are evaluated. Customer, has, this four brands uh, can be if, uh, done by multidimensional scaling. Customer one state preference for D, B, C, A, and this can be done by using correspondence analysis or cluster analysis. Consumer two state ordering C, B, D, A. The ideal point for consumer one will be close to D and far away from A, while consumer two, the ideal point will be probably uh, still far away from a but close to C. The distance of the ideal point from the object in the product space should reflect as much as possible the ordering of the consumer preference. Uh, actually, this is uh, the whole uh, because uh, you are not participating uh, much. And this is a multidimensional scaling procedure in SPSS. How to do it? I can attach uh, the material. Uh, uh, this is the unfolding option. Uh, let me leave uh, time for discussion. Thank you very much.